Ooh, y'all, I can't wait for this to be over with. Hello. Y'all want to know what my favorite word is? It's the F word. Yeah. Some people think it's a little dirty. Others really like to throw it around. Oh, y'all thought I meant fuck? No, 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 no. My favorite word is fandom. This talk is about fandom and how fandom can enrich your life and build a community of people that you might not have always talked to. Right, but I'm sure when y'all think of fandom, y'all think nerds and cosplay and fan fiction and neck beards and people in dark basements and stuff. And all that is true. <laughs> but you also probably think about America's ass. <laughs> I do. And yes, fandom is all of this stuff, but it is actually a a community of people that share a passion. Fandom is a community of people that share a passion. Right? But like all things, there's a, there's a spectrum. Right? You got your casual fans, your fans, your hardcore fans, and then you have your fanatics. And it can get really ugly. Just like that ugly thing, every time I see it, I run scared. Sorry to all my Phillies fans, it's ugly. <laughs> right? But I want to talk about the difference between being a fan and being a fanatic. Right? It's Free Fighter. Um, fans want to bring in joy. They want to share stuff as much as possible with you, right? Fanatics are, and I know I watched uh, Obi-Wan last night, so Star Wars is on the brain. Uh, but fanatics are those Star Wars fans that chase two grown women off of the internet because they gave the Millennium Falcon to a girl, right? They weren't happy about that. Those are fanatics. We want to be fans. We don't want to be fanatics, right? Because fans create worlds. Once the story is over, once the movie is done, they want to keep it going. So they start to create cos cosplay, fan fiction, video games. I mean, I myself have a lot of fit feelings and fandom, so I have a newsletter that I write whenever I remember to write it. <laughs> and, and also, and because I'm, we're friends here, I cosplay. <laughs> I'm not new to this, I'm true to this. Right? I want it to still, still engage with, with all of the worlds that I love, even though the movie was over. Fans aren't gatekeepers. Y'all can clap. <laughs> right? We all have that friend that watches us watch a movie because they want us to like the same part that they like. <laughs> that is a fan. Fanatics are those people who quiz me when I come into a comic book store thinking because I look like this that I can't know about comics. Right? And fans learn life lessons from some of the nerdiest places. Right? So for a quick example, how many Blazers fans are here? <laughs> right? Y'all are really patient people, I'm sure. <laughs> and y'all will continue to be patient <laughs> with that number seven pick y'all got. Sucks for y'all. Or, if you're an Oregon Women's Ducks fan, which we all should be, you probably understand the importance of women in power, the value of women in sports, uh, and you're probably just overall a much better person. <laughs> because fandom win harness is greater than any box office number. Right? Fandom win harness is greater than any box office number. You meet people who you might have not necessarily always talked to, right? 
you learn from so many different people and you learn a lot of things from these things that you love so much, whether or not you realize it, right? Think about what you put on your locker when you were a teenager or in your, th or in your three ring binder or even on, even on your phone background right now, right? Something somewhere has inspired you or guided you along this journey called life. Right, so I'm gonna give y'all 10, 10 things. I have a lot of fandoms, I have a lot of them, but I'm gonna give you 10 things that my fandoms have taught me. Number one, Storm from the X-Men. Y'all should be clapping right now. <laughs> she is the leader of the X-Men. As a young black girl, seeing this tall, beautiful black woman with all this white hair and that very operatic voice leading the way was very impactful for, you know, a Fox Kids Saturday morning. Yeah. That's my son. <laughs> um, Star Wars taught me that my world can be as big as a galaxy far, far away, whether, whether that is real or, fi or, or fake. My world could be much bigger uh, than just, you know, the six blocks that I call my home. Wonder Woman <laughs> taught me that my body at any sculpt, at any shape is, is beautiful, right? Wonder Woman's been her entire life. Y'all can clap. Uh -huh. Wonder Woman spent her entire life training for battle. She was not going to be a size zero. She was going to have quadriceps and deltoids. I learned that word a couple weeks ago, deltoid. <laughs> um, right? And she was going to look strong and look, and look beautiful while doing it. All right, my fourth one. <laughs> Venus and Serena, as any black girl specifically, we were forced to watch them, whether or not we liked tennis or not. <laughs> it's also because it came on cable, so you didn't have to like look for it. Um, but my North Star as a big sister has always been these two. Because when the world was against them, they always had each other. So whether or not I'm be I am being a good sister in the moment, that is what I always look towards. Uh, all right. Sneakers taught me the importance of quality and detail. And nerds, sneakerheads, you all are nerds. Nobody cares about quality leather from 1987 to 2022 except y'all. Y'all need to just accept it. Harry Potter fan fiction <laughs> taught me that I could write, write myself into any story, right? Those books about this big and the uh, black people had about what, eight words. <laughs> so I wanted to fill in those gaps and I was very good at it too. Also wrote some smut, you can look for that later. <laughs> Sailor Moon <laughs> taught me the power of female friendships. That's it. <laughs> um, and Luke Cage, now this isn't really a lesson, but my father is a massive nerd. And he would see me glomming on to these superheroes, Storm, blah, blah, blah. And he would be like, well, what about Black Panther? What about Luke Cage? What about Misty Knight? And in doing that, he was trying to teach me, yes, you can love everything that is current, but you have to know about your past. And so showing me all of these black superheroes from the 70s, from, from the 60s, kind of led me through life. And now I'm a nerd here talking to y'all that shit. So blame him. <laughs> Boy bands. B2K specifically taught me to scream really loud. <laughs> and China. <laughs> taught me that I can be the ninth wonder of the world. That I can stand in a ring or an office room, or here on this red carpet, and take commands, right? Because in a lot of rooms, I will probably be the only woman. I will probably be the only black person. And I'm for damn sure probably gonna be the only black woman. So people are gonna look at me anyway. I should have something to say. I should be able to take, take to the stage. So listen, don't be, don't be afraid of 
the, of the F word. Because when you love what you love out loud, that is audacious. When you love what you love un, unapologetically, it is beautiful. All right, so fuck it, y'all. Be a fan. <laughs>